Hello and welcome to the Scatterbolt channel and today let's discuss what is the best $400 graphics card in 2023. Is it Nvidia's brand new 4060 Ti or AMD's old but current offering of $400 the 6750 XT? So I think this is going to be a really interesting video because it's going to compare Nvidia's current offering at $400 versus an older offering from AMD that was priced at $500 but over the years has come down in price. So new tech versus old tech at the same price. And we're not just gonna be comparing performance benchmarks, but also features like power draw, game streaming, video editing and content creation, and which graphics card will be the best for you in the long run. So we're gonna get right into the video, but first I gotta give a thank you to our sponsor. All right, as you guys know, the beard is out and the clean shaven face is in, but the way I did it initially was really not that pleasant. I had some low quality razors on me that I used to shave off all of that hair and it left my face feeling really irritated and I wasn't looking forward to shaving going forward. And that wasn't until Harry's reached out to me for their trial kit. So in this, you get a razor, shaving cream, some additional blades for your razor and some other goodies. And man, I am never going back to low quality razors. The experience I get in the mornings when I shave with this leave my skin not only feeling really smooth, but I only need one pass to remove the actual hair on my face. It is that precise and that good without irritating my face. And no aftershave is needed either. And I'm willing to bet you could extend the life of these blades on the razor by a pretty decent margin if you keep them clean. So that is more value to you because you can keep the handle and just swap the blades in and out whenever you need to. So if you want to step up your shaving game, I do recommend you check out Harry's, which you can do so with the link in my description below, which is only going to cost you five bucks, but would be about a $13 value. So you are getting a nice little discount. So once again, check the link in the description below if you want to learn more about Harry's. All right, let's talk about the graphics card that has been making all the headlines lately, the 4060 Ti. If you don't know the specifications of this graphics card already, here they are on screen. But in a nutshell, what's to note is that this comes with an 8 gigabyte amount of VRAM with a memory bus bandwidth of 128 bits, which is quite interesting for a graphics card in this price range that is the same size as, say, an RX 6600, which can cost half the price of this graphics card. But in NVIDIA's defense, what they've done is that they've increased the cache on the 4060 Ti to hopefully make up for that lower, lower memory bus, which we'll soon see if that actually plays out in the benchmarks or not to be a benefit or none at all. And then we have the 6750 XT, which is basically the 6700 XT on steroids. As you can see, it's a fair amount bigger because it does take in more power over the 6700 XT. But in turn, it is faster and it is AMD's current offering of $400, which comes with 12 gigabytes of VRAM with a 192 bit memory bus width. So we've got a 2023 graphics card versus basically a 2020 graphics card. And let's see which one is better at $400, starting with our 1080p and 1440p benchmarks. So let's start with Star Wars Jedi Survivor at 1080p, no ray tracing, but at max settings, surprisingly, the 6750 XT is beat by the 4060 Ti by a pretty decent amount at 1080p, which is actually not too surprising. I mean, again, this is Nvidia's current offering being 2023 at $400. That should be expected, but it changes when we bump up to 1440p. With the same graphics settings, both graphics cards achieved identical frame rates at the average and the 1% lows, which was really odd to see. But let's go to Cyberpunk 2077, again with no ray tracing, 1080p ultra settings. And here, status quo is maintained. The 4060 Ti is faster at 1080p by about 10 frames per second. Although the 1% lows on the 6750 XT are higher for some reason. And I saw that trend continue at 1440p, where once again, the 6750 XT is beat, albeit not by the same amount, but its 1% lows are a little bit higher than the 4060 Ti's. So, so far the 4060 Ti is the faster graphics card at 1080p, but at 1440p, things look a little spicy. And let's see if that keeps up. Now moving on to Valorant, which is just achieving maximum frame rate by all means, with all the graphics settings turned up, the 6750 XT beat the 4060 Ti, not just in the average, 
but by a pretty good amount in the 1% lows. It got about a 132 on the 1% low versus the 4060 Ti's 115. And then if we go to 1440p, that actually flips. So while the 6750 XT is technically faster, its 1% lows are lower than the 4060 Ti's. But technically it is slightly faster. So I call this a minor win, but nothing major. Then let's go to Forza Horizon 5 at 1080p at max settings. Both graphics cards got nearly identical frame rates at 1080p, same graphics settings. 123, 122 frames per second, and the 1% lows are really similar. And then if we bump up the resolution to 1440p, the 6750 XT ekes out just the tiniest of leads while having basically the same 1% low as the 4060 Ti. And then let's move on to everyone's favorite game, Fortnite, using the MM Eerie's benchmark, which just is a hectic map that throws a ton of stuff at your character. It's not completely reflective of the actual performance you'll get in Fortnite, but what it does show you is that the 6750 XT, unfortunately at 1080p, is behind the 4060 Ti, which is not too surprising since Fortnite is very much optimized for NVIDIA cards. And unfortunately, the narrative pretty much stays the same at 1440p, with the 6750 XT falling behind the 4060 Ti. But then the roles switch when we move over to Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p with the Vulcan API at max settings where the 6750 XT with all the dials turned up gets 56 frames per second with a higher 1% low versus the 4060 Ti is about 10 FPS lower, 46 at average frame rate. And then if we go to 1440p, that gap I think is about the same with the 6750 XT getting about 36 frames per second on average versus the 4060 Ti's 30 frames per second on average. Admittedly, I did crank up all the graphic styles for that game specifically, probably more than they should for these graphics cards, but if we want to stress test them to the max, you kind of need to do that. And Red Dead Redemption 2, even being about five years old, is still a really meaty game. But now let's move on to the ray tracing benchmarks. And let's see what happens when we move on to Star Wars Jedi Survivor. So at 1080p with ray tracing turned on, and this is without any fidelity FX, and again, there's no DLSS in Jedi Survivor. The 6750 XT does lose to the 4060 Ti, but not by a lot. And this is weird. Without ray tracing turned on, the 4060 Ti had a very clear lead at 1080p over the 6750 XT. But when you turn on ray tracing, which is something that I assume the RTX 4060 Ti with its updated architecture would do significantly better in, doesn't pull that far ahead. It's only ahead by about five or four frames per second. And then if we go to 1440p, I kid you not, with ray tracing turned on and all the graphics settings turned up, the frame rate is nearly the same. 41 on the 6750 XT and 43 on the 4060 Ti. Again, I would think that there'd be a ray tracing lead on the 4060 Ti but I seriously wonder if that memory is holding it back because for ray tracing, you need VRAM and you need fast memory at that because it takes up quite a bit of it. And maybe that is where the 12 gigabytes of VRAM on the 6750 XT shines, which is weird to say because our TX cards are known for their ray tracing. So I was questioning myself and then I benchmarked Cyberpunk 2077 and thankfully things came back to a status quo. At 1080p with ray tracing turned on, the 6750 XT got slapped by the 4060 Ti, and then at 1440p with ray tracing turned on ultra settings, it once again gets slapped. But still, both graphics cards are not doing that particularly well with ray tracing turned on, which all the more emphasizes that you need to have DLSS or AMD Fidelity FX or even Intel XESS turned on for any of these graphics cards if you plan to do ray tracing in that game. Now it doesn't end there for performance, we have to also talk about features. And there's one thing I do wanna give a little bit credit to the 4060 Ti for, and that is the fact that it comes with AV1 encoding. Now, if this video were made, say two years ago, between the 3060 Ti and this same graphics card, it'd be a little bit of a toss up. Because while NVEC is the superior encoder, Relive isn't too far behind. But when you throw AV1 into the mix, and with how excellent the recording and streaming quality is on that superior codec, it blows NVEC and Relive out of the water. So for content creation, specifically for streaming on YouTube and soon on Twitch, 
The 4060 Ti does have that AV1 encoder, but this is a gaming graphics card, not a streaming graphics card. As much as I want to give it credit for the AV1 codec, its performance isn't that staggering compared to what AMD's offering at the same price. This should be a generational leap in performance, and I'm not quite seeing that from this graphics card. But of course, the 4060 Ti comes with CUDA cores, meaning it's pretty good for more creative applications, especially for 3D rendering. And I do know that there is a pretty big difference between RTX 4000 cards and RTX 3000 cards when it comes to 3D rendering. That said though, there's a lot hampering this graphics card. And I really think your money is better spent just saving up for a discounted RTX 4070. Cause that'll come with more VRAM and its performance for the dollar, if it's discounted below 600 bucks, is okay. Certainly better than this. And then there's power and thermals. And this really is the one big pro with the 4060 Ti, but it's kind of masking up the fact that the 4060 Ti is such a cut down card in the first place that by default, it's just gonna be really efficient in the first place. The power draw on this card is going to be a lot lower than the 6750 XT in particular. This card can get a little bit hot. So if you don't have adequate cooling going to it, it is gonna thermal throttle a little bit. And I promise you, you probably aren't going to run into any thermal throttling on the 4060 Ti. But once again, that's kind of masking the fact that this graphics card doesn't have a lot of beef in the first place to work with. Especially if you look at how much CUDA cores come with it in relation to other graphics cards in the RTX 4000 lineup. And if you can compare that same CUDA core count to previous generations. On paper, the 4060 Ti has about the same percentage of CUDA cores as did the 3050 in comparison to the 3090. So it's quite the uh, graphics card for 400 bucks. So all in all, I gotta say the performance is a draw. There were times where I think the memory held back the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte, even when it came to ray tracing, where surprisingly the 6750 XT kept up with the 4060 Ti in Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And while I guess overall the 4060 Ti is technically the more well-rounded card because it comes with the AV1 codec, which is going to be awesome for content creators and game streamers, it is gonna be better for creative applications if you want to use this more than just a graphics card. And it is much more power efficient, but that's really because it's a really cut down RTX 4000 card. The performance doesn't completely sell me on this card because ultimately AMD is gonna come out with a competitor, that being the 7700 XT. And if the 7600 is anything to go by, at least the 7700 XT should offer a generational leap in performance, meaning the 4060 Ti is probably gonna get slapped, especially if AMD takes the memory disadvantages of this and completely reverses that on the 7700 XT with say like 12 or 16 gigs with a faster memory bus then it might be game over the 4060 Ti, despite how appealing it is as an all around card. And I don't think the situation is gonna change much with the 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti, because at $500, it's gonna go up against either the 6800 or the 6800 XT. And while both are gonna offer 16 gigabytes of VRAM, this one is still gonna have that same small 128 bit memory bus. And the 6800 is gonna offer, I believe 256 bits. So the memory is still gonna be faster on a near three year old graphics card by the time this comes out. So while the overall package of getting an Nvidia graphics card is appealing, the performance is just not there. For it being a new graphics card, it's just not delivering it, knowing that what AMD has already released and has dropped down in price is matching or beating what this is right now at 400 bucks. So that is it for this GPU comparison video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it wasn't too late, but uh, I'm leaving for Computex in a few days and I am in crunch mode here. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed what you've seen, give it a like, consider subscribing, and this is the Scatterful channel, signing out.